You know, most families will block out time to be together, but if you want a blockbuster family reunion, we have the formula. This is the week of family fun that's easy, economical, and creates bonding experiences. Studio 5 Home and Family Life contributor Maria Eckersley knows all about it. You are a family reunion fan. Oh, for sure. Yes. And I can't take all the credit. My family's just fun this way. So I'm I'm taking 25 years of family experience and I'm, I'm feeding it to you. It's awesome. We're grateful. We're grateful. We're better for it, I'm sure. Give me the philosophical reasons, though, Maria. Why should we put the energy, the time, and the heart into something like a family reunion? Because I feel like it's what makes a family gel. You need those common memories with each other so that, especially when hard times come, I feel like you, you're you already kind of united. So you really need those, something I can plan, something I can count. I can count on every summer, I'm gonna have this fun bonding time and it pays off all year round. So you feel like it carries you. Cause I can hear, yeah. I mean, the critics might say, look, to get this big of a group together once a year, what's that really gonna do? Oh, so, so much. It's what my kids remember. If you ask them if they wanted to go to Cancun or to the family reunion, they would vote the family reunion. Oh, I love that. Every time. I love that. All right, we know the building blocks, but it's how you execute it that we want to know more about today because you said 25 year tradition yes. and you're doing it again this year. Yeah, I'm in charge this year. She's the queen, <laughs> she's it. So she's doing preparation for her own party and for, yep. for all of ours as well. You say the first step, and this is true with any good party, you gotta choose a good theme. Yeah, I think so. I think it's what makes each you each reunion different, right? So I can remember back and be like, oh, remember the Hunger Games reunion? Or remember the Harry Potter you reunion? Did a Harry Potter family oh, reunion? My, gosh, my sister, she was in charge. We switched it up. So each year, oh somebody in the family, one of the families is kind of like the cruise director, right? So they'll pick, pick the location, they'll pick, you know, the, where we're doing, it's what the, the food is, is, and the theme, because that's what ties everything together. Do you know your theme for the Oh yeah, year? we're doing, my, my maiden name is Wine, so we're doing Ready Player Wine, and it's all video game theme for my boys. They're very excited. How fun. And the cruise director, that's kind of a mentality you take on. Yeah, it's it's a really big job because you again, you're in charge of the budget, you're in charge of making sure there's enough food and all those things, but you you delegate out as much as you can and you only get this job once every decade or so, so it's fine. <laughs> that's <laughs> where a bigger family really pays off. Yeah, for sure. Your rotation doesn't come around too often. We just have the logo for your fun theme coming <laughs> up this year. All right, step two, set an annual budget. Yeah. And how are we collecting the funds? We try to make it as simple as possible. For us, we have a separate checking account that attaches to a Venmo and people just feed in. So every family has a set amount that they can either pay monthly or they can pay a big lump sum. They but do monthly payments? Yeah, yeah. Slick. So it's just kind of this smooth way so that everybody's invested. Because if it's if it's something like, if it's just the grandparents who are paying for it, then I feel like it's not sustainable. So yeah. for us, having everybody chip in, everybody's invested and they all want to come. And does the cruise director, does the in-charge individual set the set the budget? No, we have a meeting at the family reunion where we decide the budget for the next year. So we okay. see how things went and then we decide if we need to increase or decrease. I love this organization. Okay. I love it. Location. How are you choosing where to have this? My favorite locations are out of the way. Like you, people think you need to go to like a cool tour spot or Bear Lake or something, but really my favorites are the ones that are just sort of off on their own because then the family stays together. You want it to be, it's a little cheaper if you can get it off the beaten path somewhere fun, but you want some outdoor and indoor things because weather can make or break anything right so when you say off the beaten path like cabin in the woods yeah those are my favorite or like you know if you have church camps that you can rent for a, a couple days those kind of things where people can't easily zip in to go see a movie or go off to dinner somewhere you want them to stay close you want to lock them in yes but so, for the right reasons right but you need to have some a few key things like you really need a good kitchen to feed a lot of people fast and you need indoor and outdoor gathering spaces a couple variety places where people can just hang out and play games and those kind of things i think that's actually a really smart move to think of stations as you mm -hmm. describe them, right? As you're setting up, maybe you don't, maybe the space doesn't naturally offer those particular areas right. or corners, but you could, you could stage that, right? Yeah, right. You make a game area and you make an area where people do puzzles and you can make an area where people do, go play pickleball. And, I like yeah, that. It's that's thoughtful. The idea. It's super thoughtful. Talk to me about food. How do you handle food? How should we handle food? So food is, can make or break your budget, right? So yeah. for us, the, we all, we do communal food. Like we have big meals all together, but we delegate out the food. So even though I'm in charge of planning the, the menu, Anyways, I am not in charge of cooking it and they, we separate everybody into teams and my favorite tip this is a big one for me is let's hear it instead of making teams based on a family you make teams based on a variety of families so I might take grandpa and a niece and a nephew from this family and they'll form a team together so I then they're in the that. kitchen together they prep they cook they clean and then the next team is the next one look at that it pushes you together in, in yeah. unique groupings right and puts you to a task right a joint task which we know is bonding right 
and you're coming together. I like that. And they make themselves t-shirts and like it becomes a thing. So you plan the menu, you, you put it out there. Right. And, and then in a shared Google Doc so everybody can see it and okay. know what's coming. Okay. And then we assign each team gets this meal and then their job is to prep it, prepare it. I buy all the ingredients, but they come and they prepare it and then they clean up afterwards. But what about the picky eaters, especially if you have lots of kids running around? That yeah. can be hard to cater to everybody's <laughs> needs. We have a standing rule at our house that there are, or at our reunions that there's always peanut butter and jelly for any meal, all three <laughs> meals. I love it. It's a backup and anyone can have that at any time. And then people bring their own treats and snacks and protein shakes or yeah. <laughs> whatever yeah. they want. Sometimes even Sunday dinner can feel hard to orchestrate with large groups. And I find right. myself saying kids can survive on rolls. Yes, kids can survive right. on peanut butter sandwiches. Exactly. It's only a week. It's fine. <clears throat> Everybody settle down. <laughs> you delegate the food. You also delegate the fun. Oh, yeah. This is a big piece of ours. So to the individual families, we delegate out activities. Now, fun is what brings you guys together. But if you over plan a reunion, then the teenagers will hate it. There's, okay, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> There's a balance, right? Yes. Ours is like one to two, maybe, activities a day. But you have to make those activities like power punch, fun activities. This is where the theme comes into play because we tend to, if I put the theme out, like last year we did Indiana Jones. So all the games revolved around something with Indiana Jones and they were a blast to do together because it's memorable, right? You, you never would do those kind of activities. Like we had one where you had to learn how to crack a whip and you know, you wouldn't do that in your normal life. Can, so I, it was fun. can I come to the wine yeah, family? Come on over. <laughs> this sounds like a ball. Give us an example of a couple other games that might power punch, as you say, and really carry the fun forward. Yeah, we love the big group games and we love having a bunch of small games around the house but big group games like Harry Potter year we did Quidditch that's that was totally entertaining and we did Diagon Alley have I told you about this no okay my sister we each had to plan our own little station at Diagon Alley so my mom made wands and everybody had a different station anyway but there's also you need what like I know it's a blast but you need fun easy games too so okay. these are like pickup games that you can just have out on tables have you ever played this one no <laughs> okay this is called Shazap this is Jenga, but with an electrocution twist. Shut so you up. have to use these little electric tweezers to pull <gasps> the Jenga blocks out. And every now and then it shocks randomly. Oh my goodness. But it also lights up and glows. So the teenagers will hover around this oh, at night. Oh, they'll love it. Yeah, and they scream and it's a blast. It's so much fun. I almost got my sister suspended in seventh grade because I gave her a shock ball and she <gasps> took it to school. <laughs> oh, you love this one. That's suspension. I'll get you one. <laughs> That's suspension if you said, don't take it to school. Take it to the family reunion. What's yeah. the cat and mouth? Cat and mouth is kind of like a version of pinball of sorts. You, you're kind of flicking back this little thing and trying to knock out the cat's teeth. But the, having those kind of games just sort of laying around, you'll yeah. find like, oh, look, grandma's playing with a five-year-old and they have a blast together. Love it. So you want to look for those kind of games. You're making the memories. How are you encapsulating those memories that you will remember them for the full year to come? Yeah, this part's kind of critical. So we, we have an assignment. For us, it's my sister Sarah always makes a photo book of all the memories of each year. Love but it. But we also do things like we put together a binder of all the meals that we did so that as you're at the reunion, be like, oh, we bought six bottles of ketchup. We really just needed four. So then you write that down, then you pass that binder on to the next year's planner and you're good to go. So document, remember, and most of all, make those memories that as you described so perfectly will carry and forge the family forward for the months to come. Thanks for the inspiration and the energy. I think just, I think just bringing good energy toward this activity that sometimes can feel a little overwhelming, a little expected is, right. is gonna carry us forward. You're gonna put together a full list of games and activities, ideas for us to draw from. Yeah, I'll throw all that on my Instagram. I'm prepping for our family reunion. So if you follow me on Instagram at MechMomLife, you'll see all my favorite tips, especially in the stories. I'll throw up my favorite Good. games and activities. Diagon Alley, wow, the bar has been set. MechMomLife <laughs> on Instagram, we'll link you over. Thank you so much.